Hello guys, thanks for watching today's video and today we're going to be looking at the ultrasonic distance sensor also known as the ping sensor or the HCSR04 and it's pretty simple but we're not just going to be using this we're also going to be using buzzers and LEDs to create a project where it senses the distance between it and an object and then it will light sound the buzzer and light up different amount of LEDs like green uh, yellow or red. So that's how it's going to work. Uh, but before we do any of the actual wiring or show you how or any virtual code, you're going to have to know how the ultrasonic distance sensor works. So I'm just going to draw it out on a sheet of paper. And it's not too complicated, but it is good to understand how it works. So let's just say this is the ultrasonic distance sensor. That has four pins on the bottom. This one will go to ground, this one will go to VCC, but that'll be five volts. And then we've got two here. Now, one of them goes to trig, it's called trig, and one of them is echo. And these do very different things. The trig on the Arduino is going to be an output. And what it does is, the Arduino will power it um, and make a pulse. And it's going to send out sound frequencies, sound waves. And when it does that, that, if there's an object, it will bounce back. And that's how it will know there's something there. And then if there is something there, this will tell the Arduino using the echo pin. So then this will be an input on the Arduino and it'll go to one of the digital pins and it'll tell it there's something there. But yeah, these these two things here, these generate sound waves. And when they hit an object, if you go back and the, it can tell that there's something there and how far away it is from doing this. So that's how it works, I'm sorry that diagram is really not very clear. And then, um, when it's done that, the Arduino will know that there's something there and it can sound the buzzer and light up a different amount of LEDs depending on the distance, how far away it is from the sensor. So let's just quickly do the wiring. Um, VCC needs to go to 5 volts on the Arduino board, ground needs to go to ground. And then the trig and echo need to go to digital pins, trig to 7 and echo to 6. Then on the buzzer we need a, it to go into ground via a 220 ohm resistor. And then the positive going to digital pin 3. Okay, and then finally the LEDs. Um, the anode of each LED, which is the shorter leg. Um, sorry, cathode cathode anode um, the cathode needs to go to ground via the 220 ohm resistor um, just so it's not too bright and then the anode going to through uh, this one to digital pin 13 and then 12 11 10 9 8 um, each of the anodes of them so that's the wiring let's go over to the okay so I'm now very quickly just going to explain the code and I've broken it down into a couple of parts just to make it a bit easier the first bit, we are making a load of constants. Um, and constants are like integer variables, they are numbers. Uh, and the whole number's constant int. And they will not change. So they're just like variables, except for they won't change. Um, and we're creating one called trig pin and echo pin. And the trig pin and the echo pin are both very important um, very important in this project. The trig pin and echo pin are both on the ultrasonic distance sensor or the ping sensor or whatever. And what you do with the trig pin is you send out um, voltage in a little pulse and then it generates sound frequencies, sound waves, and when they bounce off an object, the ultrasonic distance sensor will sense that and then uh, the echo pin will tell the Arduino. So um, <clears throat> they both need digital pins, so that's 7 and 6, so that's going to go to pin 7 and 6 on the Arduino. And then the six different LEDs need 
pins, so that's 12, 11, 10, 9 and 8. We need to make one for the buzzer, which is on 3. And then we need to create another variable, um, not a constant, just a variable, for sound, and that's equal to 250, but we'll get onto that later, about why that's that. Okay, so now we're starting a void setup, and um, we're doing serial.begin9600, and that's because we want to use the serial monitor. And when using the serial monitor, um, in the void setup, you say serial.begin and then 9600. The 9600, uh, a lot of people get confused about why that's there, it seems a bit random. Well, that's just the standard rate of communication in bits per second. Um, I could go on for a while about why that's that, but it's just it's, you just need to know that whenever you're using the serial monitor, you say serial.begin and then in brackets 9600. And then we've got a lot of pin modes. Um, if you don't know how to be know before, you'll know what pin mode is. It sets things as inputs or outputs. If it's an input, the Arduino can detect whether voltage is going in or not, uh, whether there is voltage. And if it's an output, the Arduino can send out voltage. Um, <clears throat> so the trig pin, we said, is the pin that sends out voltage as, as a pulse. So that needs to be an output. And then the echo pin is the one that, the, that tells the Arduino um, whether there's something there, so that's an input. And then all the LEDs and the buzzer are outputs because we will be sending out voltage to light up that LED when necessary and same for the buzzer. So that's that little bit and now we're moving on to the next. We're now in a void loop which will run over and over again and here we have something called a long and a long is uh, it's like a variable, it's, it's like an integer variable but for bigger numbers. Um, so that is like an integer variable and we're creating one for duration and a distance okay and then we're going to set the trig pin as low to start off with and then we're going to use something called delay microseconds so with a normal delay it will delay it in milliseconds so if you said a thousand it'd be a second, ten thousand, ten seconds, whatever with delay microseconds, it's going to delay it for a microsecond, which is a lot smaller. And then we're going to set it as high, and then we're going to wait for 10 microseconds. And then we're going to set the trig pin as low again. And then the duration is equal to pulse, pulse line. Now, we're going to find out a bit what pulse line is now, in a second. Um, but then, just before I go on to that bit, just the line below, distance equals duration divided by 2, divided by 29.1. Well, that is just the calculation that you use to work out the distance to um, an object when using the ping sensor. Um, that's, just, that's just the calculation that you use. Okay, so before in the previous bit of code, we looked at what pulse... Um, well, we saw that there was a line with pulse line in it. And um, I'd never come across this before when I hadn't, before I'd used ultrasonic distance sensors and had to use it. Um, but what it does is it reads a pulse, which is either high or low on a pin. So, for example, if the value is high, pulse line waits for the pin to go high and then starts timing. Uh, and then it waits for the pin to go low and stops timing. It returns the length of seconds or zero if no complete pulse was within the timeout. Timing has been determined empirically and will probably show errors in shorter pulses. It works on pulses from 10 microseconds to 3 minutes in length, but also note if the pin is already high when the function is called, it will wait for the pin to go low and then high before it starts counting. This routine can only be used if... Um, if interrupts are activated. Furthermore, the highest resolution is obtained with short intervals. And then below there's just a bit of syntax, pulse line, and then the pin, and then the value. Or the pin, the value, and the timeout. So I'm hoping that that, that kind of makes sense, because um, the line's duration equals pulse line, echo pin, high. Echo pin is the pin, and high is the value. If you don't understand that, it might be useful just going off and having a little further look at what pulse line is um, and how to include it in your Arduino code for ultrasonic distance sensors. So now we're still inside the void loop and we're going into if loop. So um, it's saying if the distance, which we did a calculation for in the previous bit of code, 
is um, less than or equal to 30. Uh, it sets the LED as low and it sets the sound at 250. We'll be using the sound variable later. But uh, the, the sound variable is basically going to affect whether what sort of tone it gives off. And then else, uh, digital right to LED low. So if it's um, less than 30, it's going to set the LED as high. This is the first LED. This isn't all of them. This is just one of them. And if it's, um, if it's not, it's going to set it as low. And then if the distance is less than 25, uh, we're going to... Uh, we're going to set LED2 as high and set the sound at 260. Else, set the LED2 as low. So you can see here, it's going to carry on for all of the LEDs um, going down 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. And um, however low the distance is, it will set off more LEDs. So every time the distance gets closer by 5, it sets off another LED. So you'll see, so as you can see here, if the distance is less than 20, it set LED3 is high and the sound at a slightly higher frequency. And then um, L set it as low, and then if distance is less than 5, set the LED4 as high and set the sound at 280, else um, set the LED4 as low. Last if loops here. Um, besides one at the very end, if the distance is less than 10, set the LED 5 as high, set the sound at a slightly higher frequency, 290, else we need to set the LED 5 as low. And then finally, um, if the distance is less than 5, it we set the final LED as high, LED 6, and set the sound at 300, and then else set it as low. This is the final snippet, snippet of code here, but if the distance is greater than 30, and then we've got them two vertical lines, what they mean is OR. So instead of writing just the word letters OR, you just write them two vertical lines, which you'll find on your keyboard next to SHIFT on the left. Um, so if the distance is greater than 30 or less than zero, um, print and serial monitor out of range, and then no tone buzzer so no tone if it's not out of range else serial dot print distance serial dot print line centimeters so it's going to have a whole new line for the centimeters and then um it's going to send out a tone for the buzzer we declared at the start a constant for the buzzer with the pin it's attached to and then sound and all the way through we've been changing sound to 300, 260, 240 depending on how close it is whether it's less than 30 or less than 15 or less than 5 but um, it's going to be a higher frequency depending on how close it is if it's really close like less than 5 it's going to be a frequency of 300 which is high pitched if it's going to be like um i don't know less than 20 less than 30 it's going to be a lot lower frequency so that's how it's that's how it works and then just a delay of half a second at the end so that is all of the code for this project hope that it was understandable and that you understand what understand what pulse line does um, and thanks for watching be sure to check out my many other arduino tutorials on this channel and see you next time.